Growing up Italian, I spent a lot of time in the kitchen. It was a non-negotiable in my family, but I really did love it. That's where all the action happened. We ate well, we lived well, and it was all about the food. What I didn't like about it was the recipes. And I understand why a lot of people just don't want to cook. It seems daunting. The list is huge. The ingredients, so many of them. And then the steps to get there. Who has the patience? Not many people. I get it. I learned from an early age how to make things my own. I never wanted to follow those stupid directions. What I learned to do is look at recipes as a guideline. And then I was going to finesse my way to making it my own. It's all about experimentation. And I want to show you how to do that today with what I see is a huge problem in most people's refrigerator, and that is the American classic. Ketchup. It's a sugar palooza, and it's lurking in most everyone's refrigerator. I know it's harsh. I'm sorry, I'm just the messenger. Let's go through the ingredients together. We've got tomato paste. Now that's fairly benign. Then we've got liquid sugar. That's not good. It's the second ingredient, which means it's the second in proportion. Tomato paste being first. Liquid sugar, genetically modified, being second. Then we're moving on to the white vinegar. That's bottom of the barrel. We can do better. Salt. Well, of course, when they say salt, they mean the white stuff, the pure sodium. Not salt like we're going to use today. Onion powder. Or that's pretty standard and spices, which is their proprietary blend that they're not going to tell us what's in it. When you see the word spices, that means it's their proprietary blend, but it can be more than just spices. So keep that in mind because I am always looking for lurking chemicals and I don't want that in my food. Now what I do is I'll take something like this, I'll look at the label and go, hmm, okay. Um, I have my goals of what I want to achieve with this. I want to achieve less sugar and more flavor. Then I go to the internet and see what other people have been up to. And then I try to whittle it down. Except better ingredients, again, with a focus on lowering that sugar. I want to teach you how to achieve the flavors you love without the toxicity, because you're gonna make it yourself. Let's taste and feel our way to making ketchup. So now, every recipe that I've seen on the internet, um, and of course on the bottle itself, has onion powder. I'm gonna change that up. I don't like to use powders a lot. Um, the reason is because they can easily be contaminated with other stuff and it's known to happen. So I just go with a little shallot. Now remember, we are doing a little recipe here. We are winging it today. So we wanna just make a little bit and if we love it, we can double the batch right now or we can turn around and next time do it again with a larger quantity in mind. It's nice to try it in small little bits that way we know we love it. We're gonna grind up that shallot. Super simple. Our next ingredient is tomato paste. Now here's the thing. I went looking for tomato paste and out of about 14, I found a pure one. All of them had preservatives in them. You really need to look not only at what it says on the front of the can, but the ingredients on everything today. You can't miss a beat. We're gonna add this in with our shallot. There we go. Again, we're starting with just a little bit because this is experimentation. Next, apple cider vinegar. On the label of the ketchup, it says white vinegar. We're going to go one better. Now, here's the thing. 
I want to teach you to taste and feel your way. So giving you measures is, you need to discover your measures. I don't want to give them to you, but I know you need guidelines too. So as we get started, let's just go with a cat fall just to see how that looks. No, it needs another. Now we Always watch the order of the ingredients, as I said before. Your tomato paste was first in the ketchup, then was the liquid sugar, then was the vinegar. So you know, of course, that that's got to be way less. So I would start out with just a little bit because you can always boost it up. You can't take it away. Next, instead of liquid sugar, we are going to add a little maple syrup. The reason I'm using maple syrup instead of honey or molasses is because when I started to look at a lot of the recipes, it defeated the whole reason for making it to begin with. They were way too sugary and in some cases exceeded the four grams per tablespoon that I'm finding in that ketchup. We don't want that. So I'm going to use a little maple syrup. Now again, just a drizzle. A tablespoon of maple syrup has 21 grams of sugar. That's quite a bit. So we're putting not even a teaspoon in this little batch. Next, you know that proprietary blend of spices they were talking about? Yeah, we're gonna make it ourselves. It all starts with a little Himalayan salt. Now again, we're not using that pure sodium salt. So just, I'm using the rock. So I'm gonna put this in my mortar. Now, I've seen mustard, and I kind of taste that a bit in the ketchup, and I've seen that through recipes on the internet. So instead of using a mustard powder, which can be really strong and also a little too hot, I've got mustard seed, real mustard seed. I like the straight seeds because then I know for sure that's what's in it. So see that little bit? I'm gonna put that in. Next, I've seen clove and cinnamon in a lot of recipes. I don't feel the cinnamon, but I feel the clove. <laughs> We're just gonna use, I need a nice big one. One big one. I mean, this is kind of punchy, so we wanna make sure that that's exactly what we want. Now we're gonna grind it up. Now, next time, if you like what you created, and you can mess with it a bit, because you only made a little bit, just like this whole recipe. The whole thing is remembering what you did last time. All right. Ooh, that clove uh, pops it for sure. All right. Don't mind me, I'm a taster. I'm not a plastic glove kind of girl. I think we're gonna go with that. Let's see what she tastes like. But you know what is really important and I haven't done at this particular time? I need to thin this down. We wanna thin it down with a little water so that it's more spreadable and it has the consistency that we like in ketchup. So get your processor going. Again, a little bit at a time. What? Oh yeah. All right, now it's taste time. I'm gonna add a little bit more maple syrup because that was really like not even a half a teaspoon. We're probably at a teaspoon of maple syrup in total now. Now, <laughs> that's good. But it does need a little bit more of my salty mixture. But I'm going to do something a little more fun. I like a little nip in my ketchup. So I am going to add a bit of a chili. Hold on. 
Here we go. Now that's a little much for my blend here, so I'm just gonna add half and grind that in. Again, you just keep building on it, right? Creation takes time and a little patience. Now, I'm never afraid of the Himalayan salt. Okay, now that is probably what I'm looking for right there. And it is, exactamente. It's perfect. So there you have it. The problem with recipes that you follow to the letter is that there is just no fun in it. Number two, there is nothing perfect about cooking. Cooking is about you. You don't have to do it like everybody else ever has. You like it a little more hot, make it a little more hot. We need to stop going for convenience when the convenience is actually staying at home in your kitchen and making it here. I love to see the look on people's face when they love my food. Who doesn't? It's all these little things that help me thrive at 50 and beyond. If you enjoyed this video, please do hit a like and subscribe to my channel. I would love that. And you can always check me out on Instagram and of course on Facebook. Thrive at 50. Have a fabulous day and uh, we'll see you again.